So I think we'll be going into that third game. If we can hold Puma and Osho, we will. If not, then we'll just have to go with what we've got. And it uh, looks like we are going into the next game, which is on dual side. So uh, we can get ready to get this underway. Are you ready? I'm always ready. All right, we are referees as well this time. So we can get underway with Thorzin versus Abba. Game number three, the advantage Abba, despite not being the favorite here, is gained through winning that first game, is he gets to choose this last map which is dual side is his map of choice here an interesting choice for him right there dual side a gsl map there is some debate on the validity i suppose and the viability of dual side at this point what do you reckon to it as a map uh, i actually enjoy dual side a lot it's very easy to take a third base uh, for the zerg player here can extend back but at the same time even though it's easy for you to take the third base pushing for terran players here to the third base is really easy if they can get a good start through hellions because hellions are good on here Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to bring you Mousesports for Zane. He is in the red trunks and he is playing Terran to the west of the dual site versus his opponent, Roxkiz Abva. He is in the purple trunks and he is playing Zerg to the east. And current score is one apiece. And as you can see in the crowd, I have contact with the admin and they are holding that game, uh, Puma versus Osho. So yeah. we will be going into that Very cool. straight away. As soon as this match God, finishes, that we'll match is going to be great. That's like aggression versus aggression. That's lion versus tiger or indeed Puma. So I'm looking uh -huh. forward to that and yes we will be using the proper pronunciation of puma on this stream yes indeed americans puma it's you know puma. how much they talked about puma. That. that was like it it was dude apollo just says puma and they're like type it p-e-w-m-a why does he say puma pepe, like, pepe la puma oh, like, yeah, americans. It, it is pronounced puma that is the correct you know we, we could talk about other things like the American issues with translation and pronunciation. Ah, uh, oh, oh, America. We love you. We do. We I do. will be back for IPL4, so you have to love me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm glad that Otherwise most of them aren't actually awake time. right now, so... That's it, good they too, don't yes. mind. Unless they're drunk right now, and they're going to be violently angry at us. Uh, um, but we do have the refinery going here and down for Thorzade. Meanwhile, we are seeing X16 hatcheries should be coming down very, very shortly here from Abva, but he is delaying it a lot here, uh, and he is delaying it. Concentrating a little bit too much on his probe, I think. Uh, the kind of harassing probe is actually going to land down a 17 hatchery, which is very, very, very late here. And he should be going into... Actually, he's even going extractor as well. So basically what he's saying is, let's go, bring that... Build that bunker. I don't care because I'm going to get a full surround on this. Well, this is going to be fun. It looks like every time that we go into a new game, it resets the lining volume to 100. Fun times. Hopefully we can get this sorted between that. I have readjusted it. You guys will not be deaf anymore, but yeah, we're just we're we're doing a bit of equipment wrangling right here. Always fun. Wow, that's interesting. I wonder why it does that. But anyway, uh, we do have we can sort stuff out as yeah, we, we do yep. on the fly. We are just making things good for you guys. And anyway, we do have the extractor first, by the way, and then the spawning pool. So he's going to have speed relatively fast here. Yep, definitely. Uh, but the thing is, he can't defend against any aggression in terms of bunker harassment. Yes. So in this scenario, Thorzin isn't doing it, but he should have been a little bit more careful with that. Any other player would have punished him uh, for doing that, especially Select, who actually beat Abba in a bunker rush scenario in game one here. Select so. bunker run shake. Don't, don't color me all that surprised for that one. I, Select is extremely good with his execution when it comes to that. In fact, one of the only players I've ever seen hold a really aggressive select bunker rush was actually Moro in the TVZ scenario. Yeah, Moro's good. I'm surprised he couldn't come. I think it's, uh, he was only not here because he was traveling to Korea. Like He's in a few very days. focused on WCG. Incredibly so. Yeah, so we do have the command center now coming down before any Hellions are actually made. So we do see the economy focus of Thor's aid. And it also helps that he did take off gas for a long time too. They can actually build two Hellions as soon as the, the factory, <coughs> excuse me, the factory's done yep. while getting that command center. And that's the thing about Thorzane. He is so critical and very ultimately precise with every single thing he does, even every unit. He will never build a Marine too many. He will never build a Hellion too many. He will not waste anything early on. And that's what makes him such a strong competitor in the esports scene. That's very, very true, and we've also seen in tournaments that he's been at, including the recent IPL4 qualifier in the UK, that he has his builds looked at by Koreans. Like, Koreans are very interested in how he plays. They, uh, Slayers Ryung, for instance, was watching Thorzane play and was making notes on builds and things like that. All of the Slayers guys, in fact, have been taking some pointers, and Thorzane has affected their playstyle somewhat. That's really interesting to see, considering the usual trademark aggression of Slayers, but now Thorzane, I think, has also picked up bits of their style, too. 
And I really like what we're seeing here from Abba, building just, an, just enough amount of links to actually deal with Hellions. Trying to go around and flank, actually, which is really nice. He's going to be able to kill, well, actually, there's four Hellions, so they won't be able to kill all of these, but there are more on the way. Yeah, but looking for a surround right here. Will he be able to get it? No, he is not getting that one just yet. Wants to get out of there as quickly as possible. At least he is now of creep. He needs to get a good couple of shots on. Abba, there we go. Abba, 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 what are you doing, good sir? Because there are more and more links on the way. And he's got so much gas built up. I mean, is he going to throw down a Bailey nest or something? Or try to bust this? Because he has 350 gas now built up. Loses a lot to these Hines, though. And uh, this is really interesting play right now. You know, you could even say it's a little bit of a mistake here. Um, and I am really interested to see what this is going to be. Why does he have 400 gas? There is the Bailing Nest. Mm. So we are going to be seeing Bailing Aggression charging down onto the natural Thorzane. But luckily for Thorzane, he has started Siege Tech relatively early this time instead of Blue Flame Hellion. And also doesn't have a third command center like before. So he should be able to hold this. The problem is there's not a bunker or anything. The thing is, oh my god, these Hellions actually spot all these links. These links should not be there. They should actually should be drones. So Thorzin should be smelling something right now. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it is rather late for a really big Baneling bust, but I don't know how well this is really going to work with those two tanks out, especially if he's able to get a third, which he most certainly is, and with Hellions on patrol, keeping an eye out for things, finding large compositions of links. If he finds those ones over, oh, if he gets there. If mm. only he got there. And they, a single marine is moving down the south side as well. Thorzane can smell something, but he's not 100% certain. And uh, we do have three tanks. They need to get in siege mode. The thing is, these bailings and helis are now scouted. The bailings and links, sorry. So now Thorzane goes into siege mode, and this base is pretty much uncrackable despite these bailings being there. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to do an awful lot, honestly. He can even sleep in, sweep in there with the Hellions to do some damage. The uh, Bailings charging in and the Lings coming to back that one up. Although I have to wonder if the Lings will be able to do much. Not looking very likely. There we go. Bailings detonate and really very little done there, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he loses two tanks and at the same time there's still one left. The bunker's been made as well, but he saved like five Marines. They're going to clean it up very, very easily. And now we're going back into drone production. Actually, only at 22 drones right now, will shoot up immediately the 33, but if you actually compare that to Thorzane, 37 SCVs and 2 mules versus 33 drones. So what Thorzane basically can do now is sit back, build a third command center. You don't need to go and attack right now. You can go and attack, but the, uh, the latter option, which Thorzane does prefer to do all the time, is to take the economy advantage rather than trying to kill there and then. So we actually see double refineries going down, Third command center should be coming down relatively early and double upgrades as well from engineering base. So we are actually going to see bio and tanks rather than, well, or comparing it to the traditional mech we saw in that last game. Yeah, still going down the bailing path at the moment, which is rather interesting. A lack of upgrades, a lack of layer tech coming in right here from Abva. Just, I am not convinced by this current approach. I'm really not. The bailings haven't proven to be all that effective. We've got plus one melee coming up. No sign of layer tech just yet. And while he does have reasonable map control, I have to wonder what that's actually going to gain him in the long run. Well, not much because he hasn't got a third base. Thorzane's working on his third base. He's got double upgrades running as well. So Thorzane, through defending, has put himself rather far ahead. And we're actually seeing a lot more links in production. Abva actually expecting a push. Rather than what we're actually seeing from Thorzane is the third base being built and he's literally just going to camp there and sit there and do nothing. Um, so Abva actually has 30 links, well more, 36 links, 8 more on the way. So he's looking at 42 links and more being made too. So he's like expecting a push to come or at least he's going to try and deny a third base. But the, the amount of siege tanks uh, that can very easily just crawl towards the third, third base it's going to be so easy for Thorzane just to hold. Yeah, and never let it be said that Thorzane is not a patient man. If it takes him a while to crawl over there, then it takes him a while. He doesn't really care. He'll continue to amass his army, look for a weak point to strike in. Almost the 12-minute mark for the lair going down. It's incredibly late right here for Abva, and my concern is that if you're going to delay it that long, you must have gained something in the early game to justify that. And these Marines here are actually going ahead and scouting for the third base, because there is a Marine at the north side at 12 minutes and 20 seconds, sees no expansion. So Thorzane is like, that is really late. Where is yep. your third base? So he's actually checking around everywhere and not seeing anything now with these Marines. He's got to be like, God, this kid is so bad, I'm going to win, because... He's so far ahead right now. 99 supply, 73 supply for Adver. Thorsen is now going to take this third base. 
He will probably want to planet your fortress it up just because of the aggressive nature we see out from Adver here. Yeah, he absolutely will. And hey, he brought the welcoming party. It looks like Thorzane will not be expanding there anytime soon. And he's going to have to start crawling some tanks down and moving out. You can see he's already slowly redeploying those tanks. Deploying Bunker as well to try and prevent that. These four Marines are not... Oh no, there we go. It's just the sheer amount of Zerglings are able to get in there and spot it. An interesting transition here from Abva. He's going to double hatchery there and upgrades coming in. The plus one has actually completed for the miss attack he cancelled melee and he's going to try and transition into roach and fester yeah and we do have two two about to start for thorzane as well there it is starting now and there's that crawl to the third base very simple for thorzane to go ahead and take it and uh <coughs> sorry i'm still sick but with this bunker he's going to be able to fortify this area relatively well i do like what abva's doing now realizing that he is behind he's actually expanding everywhere to the north side to the top left to the bottom right and so he's actually going to be out of mine here. Unfortunately, the bottom right is going to get scattered by a single Marine very, very shortly here. But at the same time, the SCV counts 66 SCVs versus only 57 of Abva's drones. And he is going over to that Infestor Roach style, but still, the Spoon is spooning away. You know, he's just playing so defensive, yet winning. Yeah, and that's just the way that Thor's aim plays, and you should expect that, and honestly, it's extremely effective. Why get aggressive when you know you can't gain anything? Why get aggressive against a player that's yeah. got a huge amount of lings controlling the map? Just let Abva run himself up against the barricades, impale himself upon the pikes, and then, of course, the bodies of his soldiers can be used as an example to others. Exactly, and uh, it's now 15 minutes and 15 seconds, and we still don't have the third gases or the third base gases taken for Abva. So he's very gasless right now. He needs to start thinking about this shortly. Otherwise, it's just going to be too Ling heavy once again. He's not getting the upgrades he wants either. These Lings are only at uh, zero one. So plus one carapace. Only just now, plus one melee attack. If you're going to play this style, you want to be having double upgrades running. So you can actually keep up with the Terran. Uh, and you're going to fall behind with Terran upgrades. And once that happens, two, two hits. Lings are already pretty bad against Marines alone. So they're going to be so much worse. What I am liking about Abva is the fact that he has got some fairly exceptional creep spread, which will allow him to uh, get some good surrounds if Thorzane decides to get aggressive. The only problem being that Thorzane won't until he's absolutely certain that he can crush. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, having a look at Thorzane now, he's even getting plus one vehicle weapons. He's dropping at the left side, does get picked up by two investors, but at the same time, he's still preventing mining from there. It's not that important, and he actually dealt with that drop rather well. Yeah, uh, Because, I mean, he's mining from a third base. He's got a base in the bottom right as well, which is being dropped by a couple of marines as well that do manage to run down there sorry uh, and so they're doing damage also and now more marines this base is going to go down and thorzane is literally not crossing the halfway line yet is beating abva in almost every ratio and aspect yeah it's interesting isn't it the sheer base size of abva you think on first glance oh abva's ahead and no not really because he's not using those bases effectively he's not using the gas at this stage of the game the gas is what matters there's pure ling and Baneling style really is not going to work against Thor's at this point. He doesn't even have Baneling speed yet, and he could have got that ages ago, which is an interesting decision. Maybe he's playing the Lalash style of forgetting it every game. And uh, we are going to go ahead and see another drop to the top left. A Medivac, four of Marines, two, two Marines as well, though four Infestors and two Spine Calls of the Queen should be enough to clean that up there. Uh, but at the same time, he's going to be out of cancellation, or get a cancellation rather, on this hatchery in the center. And Thorzane is also pushing through the center of the map with a, a small hit squad, just getting rid of the creature humors and so on as well. Yep, they seem to have met this space sheep over here, and they're not all that interested in it. And I'll run forward and try and deal with some of this creep spread, which is one of the only real advantages that Abba has right now. Those Banelings are, should be an easy pick off. He did lose Marines unnecessarily there, as far as I'm concerned. A nice pick up there by Abba, but in the meantime, the cancellation was forced over to the side here. And uh, what we need to see now from Thorzin is actually we have three barracks on his natural. They all should be actually reactors. It's pretty sloppy that he hasn't done that. But at the same time, you know, he's, he's not playing as tight because he's not being, he's not being demanded to play as tight no, as usual. not at the moment. Um, so he's actually uh, making a few mistakes here and there, but at the same time controlling the game so well. He's about to go ahead and take a fourth base when Creep actually finally spreads out. But here is this little push. And uh, this little push, should I say, is actually rather strong. 41 Marines, 14 tanks. 14 tanks, should I stress, and a counterattack coming here from Abba to the natural. Yeah, but he's going to do a reasonable amount of damage here if he's able to break through the bunker. He wants to try and avoid that siege tank fire, though. Siege tank fire will take out some of the SCVs, but honestly, 
didn't really do as much as he would have liked. Workers killed for him is only at three, and that push is continuing to go forward. The transition for Abva is going to be into Ultra Ling, the Ultralisk and Zergling style with a lot of upgrades. Problem is, he's behind on upgrades. He has been for a while. So unless he can really get in there and get his upgrades going as rapidly as possible, then that style isn't going to work so well. And this fortified position here from Thorsey might actually just be checkmate, um, to be honest. I don't see Lings and Infestors breaking this down. And Thorzane can very easily reinforce this area. He's sniping hatcheries on the left-hand side of the map, moving up now towards this base as well. So we're actually seeing Thorzane going with his queen. He's actually got like six queens. He's like he's so imba right now in terms of chess all over the place surrounding the king. Yeah, and when we mean queens, we mean the chess term, folks, not the actual Zerg. Although Thorzane, with his tactical genius, may even be able to acquire some queens as well. Nice grab there by Abra. A lot of Infestors able to respond to that. Cleans up the attack there, but he still doesn't have any real answer to what's going on in the main. And 3-3 three, three for these Marines is about to finish now as well. And these Marines are going to be pretty much indestructible with Medibacks. Though we do have Ultralis coming out, which is going to help out as well. So actually, very smartly by Thorzane on his natural, Instead of adding reactors to the game, he's actually waited and now thrown down Tet Labs onto the barracks here and will very easily transition over into Marauder production. And he should be then easily able to go ahead and keep up with this. The funny uh, thing ultralisks. is these Ultralisks aren't doing enough damage and there's enough medivacs to keep them alive because they only have plus one. Yeah. So it's like Marines should not be standing up to that. They're finally cleaned up when three Ultras and four Infestors come in to do the damage. But this is the problem. If you transition into Ultralisk and Zergling and your upgrades are not high enough, then the style itself is just ineffective. I may have called that a little bit prematurely with the six Queens there because I guess he... Uh that queen, that king's pretty strong there from Adverse. Looks like a couple of pawns got over to the other side of the board yeah, and are now they, playing they, queen. They definitely didn't see that coming. But at the same time, Thorzane's up and running on four bases compared to four bases, now three of Adver. So Thorzane is slowly going to win this game. But at the same time, these Ultras may be able to do something. But as you, as you kind of pointed, they're only at four armor and one attack. They'll be able to uh, kind of survive. And here is that trademark, and you will remember from last week as well, Ghosts, Thorzane's Ghosts. Oh my. They're pretty good stuff. Yeah, Thorzane with his ghost is a scary thing against both Zerg and Protoss. He went this in the IPL4 qualifier just a few days ago. He was able to defeat White Raw. I believe he had about 20 ghosts at one point. And ghosts are now getting to the point in the metagame where they're incredibly important going into the late game. And they're also very effective against... I would say not so effective against Ultras, but still fairly useful and definitely very effective against Broodlords. And very nice counter-attack here from Adver killing that third, uh, fourth base while we see Thorzane killing the fourth base of the Zerg player. The problem is Adver's running out of gas. He doesn't have gas, so he's going to be able to reinforce with a lot of Zerglings, but what are Zerglings going to really do here? That's what I have to wonder, isn't it? Especially against plus three, plus three Marines, not a huge amount, and with no plus attack upgrade. They're going to tickle. It's as simple as that. And even with the attack speed, he did get the crackling upgrade, Adrenal Glance. It doesn't really make a difference when you're not doing much damage to begin with. You can't get through that armor so easily. And now, of course, this base right here, which has some tech structures in the form of the Nidus Worm, is under threat. There's the deployment. A little bit too late right there by Thorzane. And as a result, the Ultralisks will be able to smash through and do significant damage. A little bit of a sloppy engagement. Yeah, I love it when I play Terran and I have Marines at a 3-3 against Ultralists that are weak. Even though Ultralists smash Marines, Marines don't die until they actually do incredible amounts of damage. Realistically, if Abbo was equal with upgrades, all those tanks should have been melted very yeah, easily. Yeah, much there. faster than that. He did yeah. lose a lot in that engagement. Thorzen is not engaging as well as he could, I have to say. Mm. And it has thrown away a lot of tanks. He's actually quit tank production and is going into pure bio with a lot of ghosts. Considering and his upgrade count, that's sensible. And we have a lot of go Well, a single ghost getting eight kills. Marines getting a lot of stuff killed on this left-hand side. Using the Nidus Worm. That ghost does not give it. Damn, it good lord. actually survives with ten kills. Unfortunately here, we do have a drop in the main base as well. Spawning pool goes down. Thorzane is all over the place right now. 166 supply. And unfortunately for Adver, is on the verge of being knocked out of this tournament already. Losing versus Select. GG. Losing versus Thorzane calls GG. And Adver goes 0 2 in his group. And now we have Thorzane and Select both at 2 0. I yeah, think. So that's, that's actually going to be an epic last game to decide who's first and second. Oh, definitely, yeah. So Abva pretty much has very little hope at all of going through this group at this point. Two go through from each group into the round of 32. If you have two losses, then you're probably going to be in serious trouble. It's very unlikely yeah. that you'll be able to catch that up. It's not impossible, but 
It's, it is hard. It really, really is. And that's not going to be a good start for Abva in any way, I've got to say. He's going to be very, very upset about that. And looking at the groups here for you guys that are actually in the audience rather on the stream, you can see at the back of the stream, like, up yep, there. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> right there. You know, we have Select, who's now 4020. You know, Select has been playing so well recently. And uh, we are actually kind of far away from each other, man. Gonna yeah, should we, should we should we slide over a little huddle bit? up a little? Oh, yeah. I'm actually missing gun run underneath my legs right now. But oh, I okay. see. Uh, we shall um, let him know. But yeah, so we have select going two zero four zero. Thursday now two zero as well. In the other group, we have Puma two zero and, and four zero. Looking at that, actually, um, he's not played against Osho yet, so we will be going into that very very shortly. And will Puma advance?